cracking on with the program. Um, we have Spencer Kimball, who's our CEO and co-founder. He'll be speaking with Kai Niemi, um, enterprise architect at Kindred. Kindred's been a longtime partner of Cockroach Labs. We've been in conversation with them since 2015 when we were alpha. Um, they were design partner on geopartitioning, which was a feature that Nate demoed for you and I think probably talked quite a lot about now. So without further ado. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, that, that so um, I think that most people in this room might not be that familiar with Kindred as a company. Um, so maybe you could give us a brief introduction about what Kindred does and about what you do at Kindred. Sure, Spencer. My name, as Jessica said, is Kai Nemi. I work as an architect at Kindred Group. Uh, Kindred actually started uh, as a company with a different name in the beginning, in the end of 90s, called Unibet. And it started as, a, as an online system to do online sports betting. Uh, and from there on grew to become one of the actual world leaders, online gaming companies, offering different types of games in a, in a, in a coherent platform. <coughs> games such as uh, sports betting, as I mentioned, horse racing, uh, online casinos, poker games, and so on. So Kinder basically offers an infrastructure and a platform to, to host uh, 11 different brands uh, worldwide. Uh, we are roughly 1,400 employees uh, in 50 different nationalities across, I think, 10, 11 countries worldwide. And we operate mainly from uh, uh, one of our production sites in, in Europe today. So, um, you know, as Jessica mentioned, you, uh, we first were introduced uh, through your CTO in 2015 when Cockroach was just an alpha product, actually. Um, very few people knew about us then. Um, how did you find out about us and what sparked your interest? Well, back in 2014-15, we actually were in the midst of a pre-study where we looked into how we could improve our technical platform's ability to scale. Uh, horizontally and, and globally to kind of breach out of a single of the barriers of a single data center. Uh, we wanted to address uh, or find a better solution uh, for disaster recovery to aim for something that's more about disaster resilience where we can basically enable our system to survive a complete data center outage without losing forward progress. Uh, we also have this far distant customer markets in Australia, which obviously is very far away from Europe. So th those, those customers are suffering from the high cross-link latencies. So as, an, as a global online gaming uh, operator, we want to provide the best customer experience for all our markets. So to fundamentally address the latency issues that we are uh, having with very markets very far away, we basically want to move our processing units and data closer to where the customer user agents are, are located. So it's more about providing local performance while still being able to offer the same type of service uh, globally. So in summary, it's more we looked into how we can improve our availability of our platform performance uh, without compromising the correctness and consistency in our systems. We also want to re reduce the huge investments put into the platform today. So in this pre-study, we, we looked into different alternatives uh, when it came to databases and how to manage state, because we, we saw earlier that it was fundamentally a data problem that needed a, a solid solution that were fit for purpose. And we found it through a lot of research uh, going through all kind of papers from Google and looking at Google Spanner, which ultimately led, led us to Cockroach DB. So it was some speed talk that you made in CoreOS in San Francisco, I think, that, that I stumbled over. And then I, and I emailed our CTO and said, this is something we should check out. And from there on, it kind of grew into this um, partnership. Great. I didn't actually know that story myself, so <laughs> it's a pretty interesting. Were, were there any other changes to the industry, um, your industry in particular, that uh, made these kinds of changes around resilience of the data 
and uh, more of a global footprint uh, necessary for uh, competitive edge? In our industry, we, we operate in a highly regulated markets. Uh, so we need the ability uh, to sometimes for certain jurisdictions constrain even where data, that data is located within country boundaries. Uh, so from a, from a regulatory point of view, uh, there are kind of no compromises. We need to be compliant for the licenses that we are operating in. And if we operate from uh, our platform in, in Australia, for instance, we need to comply to the local regulations there. Uh, in the same way as we do in Europe, where GDPR is highly relevant today. GDPR basically constrains the system not to expose customer data outside of the European boundaries. Uh, same if, if we would enter some market in the US or South America or anywhere else in the world, we need to have, be, be able to adapt our platform easily to the local conditions and regulations. So, and all this flexibility really creates a certain level of complexity in the system that we need to manage and, and contain. Great. So uh, what will CockroachDB be used for at Kindred in the near term, and how do you see that expanding? Well, we see CockroachDB as a key enabler for us to provide a true global service. Uh, CockroachDB offers quite very unique enterprise-level features, as we say, that was mentioned before, like the geo partitioning uh, feature. That, by, by sort of enabling us to domicile customer data to specific regions, that is a really key enabler for us to be regulatory compliant, while also <clears throat> offering local performance, local read and write latencies. We still have uh, customer journeys within our system that still need some kind of global control plane, such as when a customer register into our systems, we might need to enforce certain global constraints. So we envision that we have data centers that are active in many different uh, geographies, that they are all logically interconnected as a single cluster, as a single, single platform, instead of being forced into thinking in terms of segregating up the system and deploying silos. Uh, because as part of our business scalability, we need to keep also our operational costs uh, down while we are scaling out at the same time. And Cockroach TV is an uh, important enabler for this uh, capability. So I'm, I'm going to move back a little bit to the question I asked you before. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that you know, we first you know, started talking to Kindred was Unibet then in 2015. And you know, we've, we've grown together, actually. You guys have uh, provided you know, huge help to us as a development partner. Um, but when I look at it from your perspective, I'm still surprised that you, as a company, a very mature public company, were willing to take a bet on a, you know, a relatively new startup like Cockroach Labs. Um, you know, what gave you the confidence to take that risk and to, to place a bet on us? <laughs> yeah, good question. I mean, we, we strive to innovate. We are an innovative company. And we have tried before different attempts to find kind of solid failover-based disaster recovery-based solutions. So we have gained some experience from, I would say, less successful attempts in the past and realized in our pre-study that when we want to gain these uh, business capabilities, we really need to address it from the core. We need to find a solution that's designed really from the ground up to support our use cases. Uh, so uh, that was kind of the key driver that we want to address these problems in, in the best possible way. So we allowed ourselves to do pretty long pre-studies to really gather all the information we want. We looked at how other companies usually do it, even, even Google, how they provide or operate multiple data centers across different regions in the world. And we basically did our homework and we, have, we learned from the past and we are not really afraid of doing the, the, taking the risk if we can see and can at least show in practical terms that we're confident that this is going to work and give these benefits in the end. 
Yeah, so, um, you know, I, it's important, I think, for everyone here to, to realize, I think, the impact that Kindred has had on Cockroach Labs. Uh, when we first, when I first went to Sweden to talk to you guys, uh, you know, geopartitioning was an idea we had had. It was on the drawing board. And uh, from that week I spent in Stockholm talking to Kindred about the problems that they were trying to solve, um, this, uh, this thing that was an idea, you know, something of a wild idea really, um, actually started to look like a, a solution that would make, make a big difference. So that's over the last year, this has become a reality. And, um, you know, I would say that building something like geopartitioning isn't something that takes a year. Geopartitioning was something that could be built on the foundation that we'd been um, creating with Cockroach in a year. So that was enabling. But my, you know, my question to you is, you know, over that year where we've been developing this feature really with Kindred's use case as a, as a guiding light, sort of a North Star, how's, been, how's it, the experience been working with us? Well, it's been a fantastic journey for us. Uh, it's very <laughs> beneficial. I mean, uh, from from many points of view, one is that uh, Cockroach Labs is a phenomenal team of engineers with a lot of experience of building large-scale, complex distributed systems. So we have we have learned quite a few on the road. Uh, so the experience has been, I think, mutually good. We have, we had some interesting use cases that we actually tried out when you first visited us to see this is our problem, how could we solve it? Because we can see these characteristics and properties in your database solution. And, and it kind of grew from there as an idea that you presented. And we, we saw the more we looked into it, the more we found out that it was quite a perfect match given the highly regulated markets we're operating in. And we want to keep one single coherent platform, operate it globally, uh, address high availability, uh, local performance, regulatory compliance, and all of that. So we, we definitely saw the potential very early on in CockroachDB uh, and saw it as a key enabler for, for our global expansion. Great. Uh, so Kindred has been a longtime user of Oracle, which is, you know, the, the big incumbent in our industry, and it's a great product in many ways. Uh, you know, there's obviously a huge amount of investment that the whole industry has in tools and, and knowledge around Oracle, and I'm sure within Kindred. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how that transition has taken shape and um, what the sort of key challenges have been? Yeah, I mean, Oracle is a great database that's been evolving for 40 years or so. So it's a very mature product. Uh, we use it quite extensively in our, in our platform, both for our online systems and offline data warehouse systems, uh, for reporting tools and all of that. However, we, we realized also early on that if we want to gain these um, business objective of having global scalability. It, it's not a, a native and natural thing built into Oracle databases, really. So if we will go uh, with using, continue using Oracle, uh, when also operating from multiple active data centers worldwide, we will need to uh, add certain distribution logic to our applications or, or other proxy layers on top. And we kind of learned uh, through our experience in the past that the, the complexity in building such solutions doesn't really go away. You, you kind of you need to contain it somewhere. We felt that the best place to contain the complexity of distributing data globally is really in the database layer. That enables <laughs> us to, or the developers, to really focus on solving business problems instead. So quite early on we said we need to we need to think differently. We need to look at something that natively supports this global distribution of data. Uh, and that's why we started with Google Spanner and uh, similar research papers on how could we actually do this. And especially two camps. You either go for some strong consistency solution model. So you take the best of traditional SQL systems, the usability, the performance, uh, easy adoption and so on. And you take the scalability properties availability properties of NoSQL systems. So you can combine these two 
which been kind of explained as being very hard uh, and impossible to do in the past because you either need to shoot one of the camps, you either go this road or that road. But in Cockroach DB, we really saw you can actually, when you put your good engineering to it, you can actually solve these problems, which is what Google did initially, which was also an inspiration for Cockroach DB. So we, we felt very confidently we want to aim, go, go down this track, keep hugging strong consistency still because we find it does scale if you have the proper technology stacks, uh, stack for it. So a uh, bit of a question about buy-in, and this is sort of related to the, the question of Oracle or any other incumbent piece of technology that's in um, you know, anyone's stack. What have been the challenges in getting internal buy-in in a large organization for a new piece of technology? And do you have recommendations for, for anyone else about how to go about that? Yeah, introducing new technology always requires that you have some kind of new business problem that does, doesn't really fit into what you're currently doing. So there's new conditions that comes up, which enables you to, to you have to think, how could you solve this problem and what are the best options for you? When it comes to buy-in, it's much about uh, allowing people to reflect and make some proper pre-studies and, and uh, discuss things in, in open conditions. So buy-in comes if you put, allow it to take some time and you present different gap, gaps between how, how different solutions could look, what are the pros and cons and impacts on, on what are the, kind of the, the important abilities that you're aiming for. Uh, so it's it's been it's been quite straightforward. As I said, we are an innovative company. We're not afraid to think differently. If we see there's a new problem that needs a new solution, then we are we are open to trying that out. Great. So you you touched on this briefly already, but um, it would be great if you could give everyone a description of what your current deployment looks like, production-wise, what you think it'll look like in one year and then what you think it, you expect it to look like in three years. Our current deployment today is that we, we operate our, our main platform systems from a single facility located in Malta today for, for license reasons primarily. Uh, it, it's a highly distributed uh, ecosystem of uh, roughly over 200 plus microservices. So we are already kind of building a highly distributed system. However, the, the technology selections we are running on today are kind of constrained that you operate the platform within the boundaries of single data center. Uh, and when it comes to disaster recovery and, and resilience, we have sophisticated backup solutions and all of that set up. But within one year's time, what we want to be able to do is to actually take our entire platform ecosystem and deploy it to multiple active data centers, uh, perhaps starting with Australia as the first and then a second and a third in Europe and from there on. And that gives us the high availability properties through data domiciliation, through geopartitioning, we can really get local performance uh, so we can partition the data, both for high performance reasons and, and availability. Um, in, in the longer term, in, in, in three years perspective and so on, we, we really see that we can drastically reduce our time to market. Uh, because when we also look into this, we do a lot, lot more than only CockroachDB. We look into how we can automate things. and orchestration tools and basically have push button functionality. So from the time we push a button, we say that it should take two or three weeks before we are operational at the new uh, geography somewhere for a new market. So it's pretty aggressive uh, capabilities we are looking for, but this is really what gives Kindred, we think, a competitive edge time to market uh, uh, keeping a coherent system, our operational costs reduced, 
uh, and providing the best possible customer experience to, to any market in the world. Makes sense. Um, what, would, what would be your recommendations to anyone that was evaluating CockroachDB? I mean, you guys have been doing it now for a year plus, so I think you're yeah. in a position to say. My main recommendation would be to definitely try it out, uh, pick some, some good use case you might have, uh, and do some POC tests, do, deploy it perhaps to production with some low risk thing until you build up enough confidence and knowledge about how it works. Uh, another advice is that while CockroachDB appears as any regular type of SQL database towards the applications in terms of guarantees and, um, and properties. It's still a distributed database underneath with very different capabilities that it offers for that. So there are, there are far less application level considerations you have to take in using CockroachDB, but you shouldn't uh, underestimate that it's still a distributed system and if you scale it globally, you need to pay attention to how you should perhaps partition your data and uh, how the replicas, uh, if they, how many replication, repli or the replication factors and all of that. Uh, in our case, <coughs> what we did, we took, we, we defined a spectrum. So we took the toughest use case that we had, the most transaction intensive system with 20 million business transactions per day and at one side of the spectrum and said that if we can solve uh, the problems that we find in that or provide the same workload, support the same workload running on CockroachDB, we have solved our most challenging problem. And then we took on the other side of the spectrum the simplest use case that we have uh, only to see how big is the transition effort if we go from a current state uh, of a service running on Oracle to just running on CockroachDB. So we just change the driver and do minor changes in the schema. And this gave us a kind of a, a spectrum of, of the effort needed to, to make transitions. But definitely try it out, test it out. Also, you could look into uh, Jepsen tests by Kyle Kingsbury if you want, really want to push it to the extreme and cause different simulated failures in your clusters, take down nodes, create partitions, split brain scenarios, and all of that. Just put it to the challenge. And that's, that's what we did, we did in our evaluations. And uh, it turned out to work as we expected quite early on. So it was very impressive. It's great to hear. So um, how would you describe the future as you see it for Cockroach DB within Kindred, and I'd also be curious about your thoughts on um, Cockroach DB for the larger ecosystem. For us, we are we are of course, as I've been describing here, betting quite much on Cockroach DB uh, because we believe a lot in the the properties, what it enables for us as a business, new type of business capabilities. So. Today, CockroachDB is, is starting with focusing on OLTP workloads, and that's primarily what we're going to use it for initially, for our, our 200 plus online type of systems. But as the product matures, we also see use cases to use it uh, for more offline and near time workloads, uh, perhaps create more read optimized views of certain <coughs> data. So, uh, change data capture is also an important feature that we've been kind of also trying to push a bit for to because we see that as also as an important enabler. So <clears throat> in the long term, we are going to see more and more usages for CockroachDB. Uh, also given the fact that data privacy is, is becoming more and more important, uh, the data growth, growth is exponential. Uh, and we really need a very um, scalable data solution for a global and a global data architecture that we're aiming for. Great. Well, I think we have uh, you know time. If anyone has questions, um, either for me or Kai, I'd be happy to take them. 
Sure. Uh, thank you. This has been very interesting. Uh, could you describe uh, either the biggest gotcha that you faced in trying to use cockroach or the biggest kind of operational disaster that you may have encountered in the process? Uh, I would say the biggest gotcha was uh, really that uh, it was actually a better fit than we in, uh, initially anticipated <laughs> a bit. But really, it really worked very well for us. Uh, we know that it, it's still an early product. Uh, it, uh, it didn't really uh, live up to performance that we wanted initially, but that was also very clearly defined that the primary primary focus of Cockroach TV was initially on resilience and stability because that's what makes the product and performance comes later. So we kind of adapted our expectations based on that. Uh, Gotchas was really, the main I would say is that we really saw that we expected a transition effort if you take an ordinary type of microservice with a stateless business component and some kind of relational database, whether it's Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, moving that into CockroachDB was really quite straightforward, given that it piggybacks on uh, Postgres wire protocol. Um, you can just use the Postgres client libraries, client drivers to speak with it. And it provides a very familiar interface uh, to applications. So that would be really one of the gotchas that it was actually simpler than we anticipated for an average type of component, which doesn't have extreme workloads and so on. Thank you. So what is the biggest size of uh, table that you're dealing with right now, the partitioned one, in terms of volume of data? The biggest size of table, uh, I think, Lee, you could perhaps help me there. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's in the terabytes, but the thing is, there comes trade off with like when we go into backup or recovery, which as you know, is also in version two. We've been testing a lot with that. And then sometimes, if you really want a really low recovery time, then you need to manage maybe the size of the data. And then we start to do some other sort of engineering in the background, but we use cockroach. But yeah, it's, it can be in the terabytes. We've tested up to that. It hasn't been a problem because at the end of the day, it's just 64 meg ranges that are just distributed through the. Cluster. But do you need to partition all your tables? That's again, if you want to, in some cases we have like where we need to maintain a global primary key. And again, it wasn't maybe touched on in Nate's presentation, but when you're going to use geopartitioning, you've got to add the partition key as part of the primary key. And then in doing so, this comes trade offs with that. But if you really want a global unique key, you can't get away from that. You have to touch a lot of things in the cluster. In some user cases with uh, usernames and registrations, we need a global unique key. But a lot of cases, same with the car demo was quite good, where we have a customer and his transactions, the customer is in Australia, his transactions in Australia, so we just leave them there. So it's that sort of. And that's for every table that you want to. <clears throat> Mostly. Then the other thing is if, if we had, for example, a 20% user base in Australia and 80% in Europe, then we can just size the clusters um, number of servers according to, that's another feature that was, yeah, you get a lot of other benefits. Thank you. How do you do consistent backup across geolocations? <laughs> so uh, Cockroach uh, has, you know, um, always had the ability to read consistently at a time slice in the database. Um, what, what it, how it provides that is by um, implementing an MVCC model. So, um, right, in, by default, Cockroach will keep all of the versions of data for 24 hours, and you can, you can configure that by partition, by table, by database, there's a cluster-wide default. Um, so what, what that means is that you can choose a timestamp and you can read historically at it, and it's completely consistent. That could be a, you know, a second in the past, it could be you know, 10 minutes or an hour a day or whatever in the past. Um, the backup facility, uh, works using that same mechanism. So if you start a backup, you know, uh, now it may have to run for an hour, um, but you know it's just going to go further and further back into time. But it's going to keep reading that completely consistent time slice. So when you restore, you get the database as of that database system time. So it doesn't matter whether where the data is located or whatever. It's uh, you know it, it's able to get that exact 
the complete and exact data at that time slice, and it'll it'll go where it needs to to find it as necessary. Now, now that you talked about MDCC, do you still have the same bloating issue that we see in Postgres? We still have the same. Sorry, bloating, 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 bloating issue. Bloating. Issue. bloating. Um, we can, yes, and we actually, for example, if um, if you you know rewrite the same key, you know millions or tens or hundreds of millions of times in a day, which is how long we keep the data, right now that will cause significant performance degradation. Um, I don't know if 2.1 will include uh, you know, significant improvements there. I mean, 2.0 had a lot of improvements around that problem. Uh, there's a lot more we can do. For example, um, you know, specific garbage collection policies, especially if you know you're just going to be doing that, you don't care about the historical data necessarily. Uh, there's ways where uh, there's been lots of discussions and sort of pseudo RFCs internally around, uh, well, actually, it's external too because it's on the GitHub, but around the idea of, you know, once you get more than, say, five or ten versions, you put that into another column family in the underlying storage engines. So th there are ways around it. Um, we have some ways to go before that's just seamless and it's never a problem. Um, but, you know, that's also a, a case where it's, you know, as, as Kai mentioned, you know, it's important to understand you know, as a, certainly as a systems architect at that level, you know, what Cockroach is doing under the covers, because you can run into nasty little surprises like that if, you're, if your application is trying to, you know, do something that just isn't fundamentally uh, compatible with the current architecture. Well, guys, this has been great. Um, I think just because there's some wrap-up, we get... <laughs> Yeah, um, so you know we'll we'll be around. Thanks everyone for coming, and we'll you know feel free to ask anyone on the cockroach team any questions you have. I think uh, everyone would be happy to to answer. And of course, feel free to join the GitHub if you if you aren't already. And there's a newsletter that we send out. Um, obviously, probably most of you have seen our blog. It's pretty active, and there's pretty great information there. So um, thanks for coming. <laughs>